Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and I am Subhash Chandran. In this video, I am going to take you through to one of the famous and popular book in piping design engineering to understand how one can easily understand the design concepts from this book. Because this book, uh, it extensively speaks about all topics of piping design. So if you can complete this book, I could um, uh, pretty much surely say that uh, you'll be able to get 60 to 70 percentage of piping design concepts very clearly. Because this book has been written in such a way that uh, one can easily understand. But at, at the same time, if you look at the beginners, they find it uh, really hard and they find it really difficult to understand because they do not have uh, the basic idea about the piping design. So that's one of the reasons why. I am just making this video for them to help actually how you know, by reading it very slowly and by reading it point by point actually you will be able to understand the most complicated design uh, philosophies in piping designing. So without wasting your time let's get started. So this is the book I am talking about. I am talking about the book which is named as the process plan layout and piping designing written by Ed Boss Becker and Roger Hunt. This is one of the very popular and also a technically uh, sound book basically for uh, those who wanted to learn about piping design because most of you don't get an opportunity to learn all the areas in piping design. This book can really help you to understand it actually. So without wasting your time, let me just get into the subjects and note that it's not possible for me to uh, take you through each and every line of this book. So I'm going to focus on a very few particular area, uh, a couple of um, uh, the paragraph where it uh, clearly identifies uh, and specifies the design requirements for piping design. So that will give you a hint about how uh, beautifully these concepts are written in this book and how you should read one by one slowly to understand it so that you don't need anyone's support to understand the concept. You may have some clarification that you can clarify with your colleagues or with anyone else actually. But predominantly you can understand from this book. That is the intent of this video. Now let's get into the subject actually. Let me go to a specific page. I wanted to talk about a few important areas. So this is the one topic that I wanted to speak about. And this is um, belongs to the chapter one. The, the name of the chapter is the basics of plant layout design. Okay. Let me just take you through uh, to understand how beautifully it is written actually. See the logic diagram. The design of any processing plant is usually accomplished in three phases. See all our uh, process plants are, are processing plants basically. So the piping is one of the major part of the processing plant. Processing plant means a process plant which consists of equipments, piping, structure and instrumentation, civil works and uh, I mean uh, electricals. So there are all disciplines are involved in this um, uh, process plant basically. So they are talking about that actually. So process plant, this is known to be a process plant. It is not only known to be the piping designing basically. Piping designing is a part of process plant engineering. So what is it? So design of any process plant is usually accomplished in three phases, conceptual, study and detail. And co what is conceptual? Conceptual designs are made when sketchy or minimal information is used to prepare an abstract arrangement of a plot plan or an equipment and piping layout. And what is preliminary and study phase? Preliminary and study phase designs are made with unchecked and uncertified data to design a facility in sufficient detail so that the documents produced can be used for design and confirmation of the purchased equipment and the purchase of the bulk material. See the difference between the conceptual and the preliminary study is conceptual it's more of about a sketchy so to uh, just simply put the ideas into a paper to understand what we are doing actually. So what is the concept is all about if they wanted to make any process plan they'll simply put draw multiple equipments which are basically required for it how much space is required how much piping is required how much of civil work can be this conceptually there is no quantification basically but in study phase they use unchecked and unverified data which means it's not unchecked in the sense it's not baseless actually it is it has certain base actually but only thing is that it is not finalized that is the meaning of it basically. So uh, it takes a couple of readings for you to understand but this book really gives you a very key information. So in preliminary stage I mean the preliminary and study phase actually these details are made out in order to go for bulk material purchase. Basically they are planning to uh, arrive some of the materials that could be sent to procurement uh, 
uh, for early um, uh, purchase so and uh, so this uh, st study phase is basically to drive the bulk material so that when the construction starts you will get the material in ad in advance so that's the idea of it so now let's go to the uh, third uh, phase actually in the detail phase all designs are finalized okay in the detail phase all designs are finalized the design use check uh, the design use such checked data as steel concrete uh, drawings hydraulics and certified vendor drawings for equipments valves and in, in, uh, instruments basically so during the detailed designs uh, all information such as steel concrete um, equipments instruments valves everything will be finalized so this is conceptually it, it explains the full engineering in one paragraph actually so you can go through the entire line actually uh, but um, uh, i may not be able to uh, take you through the complete paragraph actually so this way it outlines the complete concept basically now i want you to uh, take you through a small uh, another paragraph which is known to be a basic layout philosophy so this gives you idea about how layouting is generally being done now let's take you through it actually see each plant layout designer develops an individual layout philosophy see each plant layout designer so designer himself he develops actually okay so although the conditions such as client specification uh, schedule constraint availability of information may change significantly among projects the designer style remains consistent see uh, there are projects where you will have a lot of information there are projects you will have very less information but the designer is the guy who organizes in a way to suit the requirement of the project to deliver on time to prepare this layout that is what it defines so you can understand the role of designer over here now the one basic rule to remember is to avoid designing one line at a time keep in your mind see remember this point one basic rule to remember is to avoid designing one line at a time so they are not recommending you to design one line at a time because you are working for a full plant let me show you that a picture actually see uh, if this is the picture uh, the, i mean this is the example to understand a plan a and plan b you can see there are a bunch of lines right so if you are really focusing on one particular line and you have finalized the routing you may not be able to find space for the other lines so when you are planning actually you have to plan in a group that is what the book actually says actually if you read down the paragraph you will find a lot of information actually but conceptually this is what it says basically so now if you predominantly see the difference between these two pictures here the lines are taken over here and it's elevated and dropped okay but here in this picture see the lines are arranged beautifully in such a way that the line that has to go to the far most heat exchangers are placed center so they don't have to overlap basically so the uh, the lines which has to go for the these equipments on the right and left actually are placed accordingly and position in a way that it is near to the equipment so that it can simply make a turn so here if you look at it there are number of elbows are more and here the number of elbows are less basically so i understand it varies from uh, the layout to layout but predominantly the concept of piping layouting is about how one should minimize and prepare an economical piping design so that's the beauty of this actually now let's take you through an other point where um, i wanted to talk about the above ground piping okay so here it describes about the above ground piping so with uh, the uh, exception of pipeline pumping station uh, sewer and most cooling water piping in general uh, run above grade is a process plan okay so when located below ground uh, process piping that has protective heating or that requires inspection and servicing uh, should be located in trenches so in process unit so actually our the whole concept starts from here so in process units and utility plants piping to equipment must run overhead to meet operator and maintenance clearance see how clearly it is written in process units and utility plants piping to equipment must run overhead to meet operator and maintenance clearance it clearly identifies operator and maintenance clearance is must actually short run of piping however may run at a grade only short runs are permitted at a grade okay where they do not obstruct any access base 
Piping in such off-site areas as tank form must run approximately 18 inch above grade. Your answer, okay. How much you have to keep above the grade is 18 inch, which is roughly 450 mm. Likewise, you have a lot of information. Read one by one, read one by one and list down your, the, these points actually. These are a specific and a beautiful points that you can put in your design. So this is one part and now let me go to the other paragraph actually. See here I wanted to talk about the economic piping okay. See let me just read it out actually. The major portion of the piping within most process unit is used to interconnect equipment and support uh, controls between equipments. See let me read that one more time because see the major portion of the piping within most process units is used to interconnect equipment and support control between equipments. So what does it mean? You are running the pipe to interconnect the equipments basically. You, your uh, piping is acting as a medium to transfer the service or fluid from one equipment to another equipment. So by transferring these services actually it controls the uh, process basically. So that's what it is actually highlighting. And to minimize the cost, see to minimize the cost, let me just, uh, this bulk material, equipment should be located in process sequence. That's the point. See the first point it highlights that your piping is basically running between equipment and equipment. So if you keep the equipment too far, cost of piping increases. So if you keep the equipment, equipment um, near to each other, your cost of piping will be reduced. But practically it's not possible to arrange all the equipment near to it, right? So uh, there are complications, there are requirements basically. But eventually you have to philosophically arrange the equipment in such a way it is near to each other so that you can minimize the piping cost, okay? That's how it is written actually. So if you read through it, you'll be able to understand a lot of information. See, this book has been written in such a way that there is no complicated English over here. So even a person who no, understands uh, a very reasonable average English can read the book and understand the concept. But it's not possible for you to understand in a first read. You have to have a second read, a third read, you'll be able to understand. So that's the beauty of this book. That's how I wanted to highlight the how design concepts are mentioned in this book. So I wish everyone who are interested to learn about piping design to read this book to understand the design concepts very easily. So I will meet you in another fantastic video. Until then, bye from Subhash Chandra.